This call is being recorded. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. This is Dr. Stan Harris, known as Dr. Breakthrough. Thanks for joining us on this Breakthrough Uplift Leadership Call. Again, uplift. We're uplifting ourselves, uplifting each other, and together we will uplift the world. Now, we've got a special guest speaker, so I need you all to send out a text, a tweet, or whatever you do real quick, uh, because we've got a powerful, powerful presentation coming, Susan Hamilton. And uh, so I'm just going to go through our, our daily breakthrough attitude adjuster uh, while you have time to text some other folks and get them on the line. And uh, it's going to be an incredible, incredible call. I promise you, my friend, um, it's incredible. All righty, my friend. Wow. What a great day to be alive. I feel dynamite. I like me. I accept me. I love me. We're going to have a super fantastic day today because I'm too blessed to be depressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Too glad to be sad. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm too elated to be agitated. Too legit to quit. Too grounded to be confounded. Too gifted to be restricted. Too grateful to be hateful. And too saved not to be getting paid. Circumstances are lining themselves in my favor. I'm healthy, physically fit, and intellectually equipped. I've wisdom far beyond my years. I'm an extraordinary person with incredible abilities, which I would use to add value to others' lives, knowing that as I empower others to reach their dreams, I will automatically reach my own. I anticipate meeting the person or group of people today who are willing to use their power, wealth, and influence to empower me to achieve my dreams. All day long, people will go out of their way to bless me. Today, I will add great value to someone's life. I will show compassion to those in need. I will give strength to the weak and inspiration to the weary. Someone needs what I have to offer, and I gladly make myself available. I embrace abundance, and it embraces me. I'm abundant in every way. I am an abundance magnet. I like money, and it likes me. It's attractive to me, and it comes abundantly from many sources. I circulate God's money wisely because it's a tool to empower those in need. It's also a way of keeping score of how many people's lives are added value to. Money flows freely and frequently from expected and unexpected sources in exchange for the value that I consistently bring to the marketplace. I may have been broke, busted, and disgusted, but now I declare that I am rich, growing, and overflowing. My business is booming and checks are zooming. I'm happy on purpose. I'm experiencing great victories supernatural turnarounds, and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibility. I am an overcomer. If my mountain can be removed, well, I'll just develop and practice my mountain climbing skills. I may experience a setback, but setbacks are only set up for comebacks. And as a matter of fact, setbacks pave the way for comebacks. I make lemonade out of life's lemons, and if life dares to knock me down, I'll fall on my back realizing And if I can look up, by the grace of God, I can get up. I commit to paying for my dreams of preparation and perspiration so I won't have to live with my nightmares of regret. I do not procrastinate because procrastination leads to devastation. It is the assassination of my destination. Thus, I will act now. I'm a doer. I get results to last. I now release the champion that is inside of me. I am the leader that multitudes of people are looking for. I choose to succeed today and every day hereafter. Watch out, world, here I come. And in this context, watch out, world, here we come. So I want you to take a deep breath in your nose and then out your mouth, symbolizing that you're receiving these powerful words that were spoken over you. Ready? And... Let it out. All righty, all righty. Wow, wow, wow. All righty, my friend. What an incredible, incredible call we're about to have. And so get something to write on and make sure you have something to write with because in just the next few moments, I'm going to introduce you, my friend, to someone who is going to pour into your life. And I just had such an incredible uh, conversation with her the other day with Adele and uh, her and I are both speakers at the Reset Conference in Dallas, along with um, 
Tom Ziegler and some others. I think also uh, Liddy, Lady Liddy Love, Liddy Flom will be there speaking also. And so, my friend, if you are, know anyone in the Dallas uh, area, the 17th and 18th, uh, you want them to be at this event. Now, I want you to understand Susan Hamilton, and again, you'll be here for, for just a minute, but she's the CEO of Offbeat Business Media, Media Development Corporation, and the engine behind the OBBM network. Her team works with local businesses to produce television, podcasts, brand advertising that supports the local business community in the DFW area. Susan teaches that with the right approach, media makes money for the audience, the host, and advertiser. Susan coaches hosts to develop programs that build up and solve problems for the future of other local businesses and putting power back in the right hand. So, of course, you all know my ABCD, that stands for Durable Brown Carmel Delight. My wife, Nadia, we say if it's not win, 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 we're not in. But whenever it's win, 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 we're all the way in. And so that's the approach that Susan has. That's why she's been successful. That's why, my friend, today you're going to enjoy her with great delight. So, Susan Hamilton, welcome to the Breakthrough Uplift Leadership Call. Oh, my goodness. Can you hear me okay? I don't normally do a call-in oh. show. How's this going? <laughs> Loud and clear, champ. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I'll tell you what, Dr. Breakthrough, I'm just learning about you, and I am very, very excited about the message you're sharing as well. This is going to be a huge conference. Uh, cl- definitely. I, I got to looking through your material and realized that we have some of the same instructors and mentors in our lives. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Uh, so excited wow. to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we're excited to have you and uh, appreciate the work that you're doing, making a difference in people's lives. You know, I, I always say that there's three levels of success. Number one is making money, and unfortunately, most people stop there. Number two, a higher level is making a difference. But number three, the highest level, and that's where you reign, and that is making money while making a difference. Because the more money we make, the more difference we can make. The more difference we make, the more money we can make. And it's just an incredible, incredible cycle. So, Susan, we've got uh, folks here uh, that are just hungry to hear what you have to share. And so thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you. It's so important to understand. You know, I I grew up, my dad was a deacon. Uh, We grew up in a very uh, legalistic style church. Um, and, and one of the things that I saw even after I got out of that and, and grew up and, and had my own uh, falls and journey is that largely in the Christian business community, this idea about making money is mm. uh, really negated. And uh, that's a problem. That's a big, big problem. And one of the things Bill Winston always says is, is right, if you, if I, you know, in heaven we've got, Gold Street, <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> you can't handle the idea of how money is a part of how we get things done, something that we can enjoy as a tool when we're not worshiping it. Uh, we can really make this huge difference. And it, you know, it goes right back to the garden where he said, here's all the stuff that's for you. Uh, go take it and take care of things, right? Steward things with these resources I've given you. Uh, so it, to say that what, what, what we're working on is just a um, Friday's payroll, well, that's just not enough. Exactly. Not at all. And uh, so tell us a little bit about the, what uh, stimulate you to start this OBBM network. And uh, I, I know you've been empowering people and making a difference in people's lives. And that's why Dell has you as one of the speakers there, along with uh, – Tom Ziegler and others. Uh, we had heard from Dr. Ed Llewellyn, but um, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing and uh, what you empower people to do. So one of the things I realized when we uh, looked at media across uh, just across everything is just the level of, of propaganda and uh, control that is not in our community's best interest. It's most certainly not in the local community's best interest. And it's interesting because I, I never would have seen myself as, as building this up uh, at all. It wasn't something that I was doing. But I did have a, uh, a seven-year uh, full-service national marketing agency uh, with my sister. And we were doing some really interesting work with, with every size business 
we realized that they were all kind of saying the same thing, uh, no matter what size that business was. And later on, through the events of our lives and what we started to experience personally, we started realizing that, ooh, the struggles are real all the way across the board. It's not just a particular group. And the solutions that we're offering through marketing just aren't the solutions that this this community needs if we're going to make big, big changes. And what I mean by that is I would hear people all the time say, you know what, I'd love to, I, I get the purpose thing. I, I'd love to be able to impact uh, homeless veterans or sex trafficking or I'd love to be able to work in these fields, uh, making sure that the hungry are fed, um, all of the, but you know, I just don't have the time and I just don't have the money. And throughout my journey, uh, I ended up volunteering in the prison system, looking for success stories. Uh, and I loved it. I realized that my heart was there. I realized that while the Lord taught me marketing, he also put my heart in the prison system. And I really tried to, to figure that out. Uh, what's going on with that? And I realized that I was developing a skill I didn't even know I had. I had no idea I could speak to groups. <laughs> but when you got a captive audience, as you know, <laughs> you start to realize that you can really have a little more a more influence, a little more room. And I started growing in that space, and I, and I really think it was a God thing. Um, I started realizing that we could that what encouragement did wasn't just a one on one conversation. Whoa, we can encourage masses of people, and they need it. They need it desperately. And the other thing I saw is that we're throwing people away. We're throwing away people because they're um, they realize that. They, they're having trouble retaining information because of the choices that they've made in their histories, right? Um, and their families are sick of being hurt. You know, they've given up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are not being visited, and they're left for long periods of time with no communication from the outside world. Uh, and what I realized was, yeah, this is too big. What do we do? And I was asking agencies that work inside the system, because there are a handful of agencies inside the system that are doing a great job, uh, God-fearing systems, that, and, and there's a lot of, of legalism in there too, but it, it, all, it, it comes together, right? It's all stair steps. And, uh, right. and, and the thing of it is, I started, I said, well, why aren't you everywhere? If, you, if this is a system that works and it's a God thing, why on earth is it not everywhere? What's, what is that? And they said, geez, we just need, we need more money and we need more hands. And when I heard that, it just rang in my spirit. Well, geez, that's what I learned in marketing. I know exactly how to help people have more money and more time. <laughs> is that the issue? <laughs> that is, is that the dot I'm supposed to be connecting? And then I started l l paying attention to what a lot of business coaches were doing. I was networking and, and I, I needed to hear other voices. Because for uh, seven years, I did not network. I didn't even know. I wasn't brought up in that culture, didn't communicate like that. I had no idea how important that was. Um, and so when I started doing that, I really did it to hear other voices. I wanted to confirm that the things I knew, that I, I was feeling in my heart, the things I was recognizing, the things I was reading in Scripture were, in fact, true for business. And so I started paying attention, and I heard people say, especially in the Christian business community, I can't work with that level of business, the local family business. The people that put their necks out to hire from these broken communities, the people that are willing to take chances on them, whether it's a family member or a friend of a family member or somebody in their circle of influence that says, hey, can you give them a job? Uh, they are taking on these challenges, and they're unprepared, and they're unequipped, and it's, it's kicking their butt. So business coaches take a look at that and go, whoa, that, those, I can't make any money there. They won't. I've tried. I want to, but I can't. Uh, they won't take my classes. If they buy tickets to my events, they don't go. Um, and if they take, if they purchase from me, they don't take the time to implement. And so there's all these missing gaps, and I'm I'm losing my tail trying to help these people that don't seem to care. So there must be a group of people that just doesn't care to grow. And man, did that yank at me! I hated that because I just I grew up in a local family business. I, do, I don't believe that. I think we've done a really, really poor job of reaching into the community and giving them what they need. Because when you give them what they need, they're attracted to it, right? And that's what the gospel does. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, those, that's really what led me to go, okay, so we're, we're believing a bunch of garbage, and there's nothing out there to really encourage us. The OBBM network was really born. It was a stage thing, right? I mean, first we had a radio show. We started a radio show in 2014, uh, and we went from that to... Uh, a station 
and from that to a network in relatively short period of time. Uh, and now we've been cooking for about 18 months, and we're seeing significant progress, uh, reaching about 5,000. While that might that might look low uh, when you're looking at numbers, know that it's specifically local family business here in DFW that are engaged. Uh, so wow. it says we're hitting hitting our markers in a very short period of time as a production house, helping other people understand how to master their message so that they can really impact the community as well. Because what, what I know and what you know, Dr. Stan, is that I'm not doing it by myself, right? It's the father that works through us, but he works through us. He works through us. And it's our responsibility as the governing authority, the body on this earth, to take, some, take a space here and help people understand what it looks like to have a successful business from all these perspectives. It's not one perspective. It's a bunch of perspectives. A network allows us to really feed the community the types of information that they need and bite-sized nuggets that, these, that largely coaches have trouble getting out to the masses. We can give it to them uh, with an editorial direction that helps them really achieve uh, the goals that they need, to, what, it, what do they want to teach, how long is it going to take to teach it, and how are we going to measure that success. So there's my nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> well, I would say 5,000 businesses is not a low number. <laughs> and uh, I'd say you're doing a great job. So that's incredible. Thank you. So we're, we're looking forward to um, this uh, next weekend. Uh, we're yeah. going to be there here in Dallas. And uh, I know you're going to be one of the speakers. Uh, what are you going to be empowering people I'm talking to them about at this conference. Well, like you, I want to share with them what I've learned in this journey. What did what all this? What did, what's the epiphany here? And my topic is networking, profitability, and influence. It's it's Ooh. really important to understand how all that works together, you folks. Said that, you said that too fast. You talk fast. I'm like sorry. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got some we got some real Texans on the line here. So what <laughs> what's that topic again? <laughs> Networking, profitability, and influence. Wow. I think that's what every leader <laughs> is interested in and every business person. <laughs> well, I certainly hope so, uh, because they're no small things. We, I'd like to know where are the rest of the people networking, right? We, we can go, when we're avid networkers, we tend to see the same people over and over again, and we have to explore different groups if we're going to meet new, uh, new people. But I, I do, I, I'm, here's how I measure success. How, how am I going to, when I see more people, when I see new faces showing up at these events, uh, that says we're, we're reaching. That says we're being effective because, it's not so much my, you know, you got to throw a pebble in the water and you, there's ripples, right? Uh, and that's, that's, that's fine on one level. But in my opinion, when business is happening, my ripples are touching your ripples. <laughs> it's, it's tier two thinking. It's when the people that I'm impacting are talking to the people you're impacting and they're doing business. Woo, that's kingdom work right there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. That's powerful. As a matter of fact, um, my while I was even sleeping and dreaming and part praying and just and just kept thinking about uh, kingdom breakthrough, kingdom breakthrough, kingdom breakthrough, right? And all about our kingdom assignment. Uh, and as you talked about the networks so or the kingdom alignment, right? Aligning ourselves with mm, other people good. that have those similar, right? And then it's kingdom advancement, and that's what it's all about. So. So we've got about nine more minutes left here. So do you, would you like to share maybe a nugget of one of the things that you're going to be teaching and empowering the people um, this weekend or just something that the folks here um, can take away and say, man, I tell you, thank you, Susan. I needed that because you just, because we never know what people are going through. So would you mind sharing a nugget of what you're going to be sharing? Just to thank you. And know that it's, <laughs> just know it's as a, as a host. It's, I'm used to asking the questions, so I'm having a paradigm shift here and having to learn how to be on this side, which is good for me. It's great for 2020, right, to, to step into a new position and, and understand how it operates. So I appreciate this opportunity. Um, but one of the things is is we need to understand the difference between facts and opinions, right? Um, there's mm. things that we tell ourselves, for instance, you know, um, and, and they, uh, this person is always late, right? 
this always happens or that never happens. And I know that's just, that's really basic uh, for most of us who've had any success in this world is we learn to take out the always and nevers, right? Um, unless it comes to the kingdom, because those things are pretty definite. Uh, we are always loved, and all the things that you said when you open things up, that's true. That's true. But the other, but the other things are, the, it could be there's issues behind this person is late today. How do we communicate that, right? It, there's got to be a difference between how we're saying things and how we're being received in our community, and to be really aware of that, because our community starts in our family, it starts in our teams at work before it ever reaches outside into the rest of the world. So if we can recognize those, that thing, uh, recognize the lies, yes, that we tell ourselves, but also lies that the enemy sows into us. There's, there's voices that we're hearing that are not ours, and we need to be so aware of that so we can capture that thought, right? We have to choose the things that we believe. And sometimes that starts with owning our emotions and really understanding where we're coming from so we can uh, do a better job of that communication so we can just kind of cut out uh, the garbage in our heads. If it's in your head, if it's in your heart, it's going to come out your mouth, and that is going to put some destruction in place. Uh, just like the ripples we talked about earlier, they're going to work one way or another, right, they're for, for good or for the kingdom of the enemy, and it's going down. <laughs> So we don't have any business playing playing over there. Mm. Um, you know, I think I think that's important. And I don't know if uh, one thing I heard you say, Doctor Stan, earlier is, you know, the the, the affirmations and the, the what you're decreeing. You know what I dig about that? What I totally dig about that is, in the Christian business community, you hear the phrase servant leader. You hear it all the time. But I'd like to help us all be aware that we are servant kings. Mm. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And we are, and he gave us that beautiful uh, vision of that. Um, it's not the same thing as a servant leader. There's more authority in it. And we've got to really step into that space. And part of that is decreeing a thing, as Owen Spinelli says, right? That's true. A king decrees a thing. Um, and, and we do. We need to understand, just like you did, just like the example that you're setting, those decrees. And I wonder here, this is something to, to consider. I don't think in generations past that was as important. I don't think we had to deal with, to, to be as proactive about that, uh, pre that practice as we do today. Because we didn't used to have all these distractions. Our life wasn't so busy. But these are escalated times. These, we're getting ready for the king. He will be back. And when that happens, are we going to be ready? Will he find faith on the earth? Well, with all the distractions the enemy is throwing at us, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to keep us from really stepping into who we are, which actually takes a real high level of faith. Um, not hard to get, but if your belief system is all over the map and you're not focused and you really don't know who you are, you're going you're gonna to struggle here. So.